This teenager has been the subject of an FBI manhunt since he was 14 years old. This boy has stolen houses, cars, yachts, and even planes, even though he doesn't have a pilot's license and has never even traveled by plane before. This young man has committed a total of 67 crimes, some of which include assaulting law enforcement officers and taking their guns. The FBI has been on his trail for years, following him from city to city and island to island, but with no success. An exciting story that the mind cannot believe, so be sure to watch it until the end. Today's story is about a young boy named Colton Harris Moore, whose life as a teenager seemed like something out of a fairy tale. From an early age, Colton faced tremendous hardships. His mother was a relentless alcoholic, consumed by her addiction, while his father was a drug user. After a while, they divorced. The father disappeared from their lives and left them to face the bitter of life without any financial or moral support. Their situation was really bad. Residing on a small island called Camino, nestled off the coast of Washington in the western United States, Colton's family lived in a dilapidated old caravan. Colton lived a harsh life of poverty, while his mother showed no interest in him whatsoever, her sole focus being on getting drunk and consuming drugs. Colton struggled even to find something to eat, and he saw no other solution but to resort to theft. Colton found himself drawn into a life of petty theft. He would surreptitiously enter local stores and supermarkets, pilfering necessities, particularly food and beverages. Unfortunately, his lack of experience often led to his capture, resulting in frequent stays at juvenile detention centers. These centers, which resembled guarded houses or schools, served as holding facilities rather than real prisons. Yet, Colton's mother remained apathetic, unmoved by any attempts made by law enforcement or the center's authorities to reach her. Undeterred by his setbacks, the 14-year-old Colton honed his skills and grew bolder. Venturing into unoccupied houses, he adeptly picked locks or forced entry. Once inside, his first destination was the refrigerator to take some food and drinks. Afterward, he would relax on the couch, watching television or playing video games. He always tried to target vacant houses, such as those whose occupants were on vacation or away, and many homes on their island were holiday houses, meaning the owners only visited during vacation times. Within these vacant homes, Colton found solace and temporary respite, sometimes even spending consecutive nights in them. In these stolen moments, he transformed unfamiliar surroundings into a semblance of home, forging a world where he could momentarily forget the harsh realities. Sometimes, Colton would come across houses with cars parked outside. He would take the car, go for a ride, clean it, and return it to the house in pristine condition. Before leaving the house, he would make sure to take anything valuable he could carry. He would inspect the house's cabinets, taking cash, gold, electronics, and anything else he could grab, including frozen food. Colton's rationale for targeting only items within the house was rooted in the belief that homeowners would be compensated by insurance for their losses. In his mind, he considers himself as a victimless thief. During this time, Colton broke off contact with his mom and began to establish his own identity apart from hers. He either slept in the houses he broke into or in improvised tents he set up in the middle of the forest. As he went from house to house and store to store, his tent followed him wherever he went. At the end of each day, he returned to his humble tent, rich with loot, including cash, credit cards, food, and anything else he needed. His odd list of targets included a fire station. He was aiming to steal a thermal imaging camera used by firefighters to detect people behind walls. This camera assisted him in planning his heists allowing for safer operations. Additionally, he spent $6,000 on military-style night vision goggles, and he paid for them using a stolen credit card. Months went by, and Colton continued living in his tent deep within the forest, constantly moving from one area to another on the island, robbing houses. As expected, numerous reports of burglaries flooded the police department. They had been actively working on the case for a while, 
relentlessly searching for Colton until they finally managed to identify him. They pieced together the puzzle using data and documents. They had fingerprints and mugshots because Colton had been arrested before. His absence from school and his mother's house provided early evidence connecting him to the string of thefts. However, capturing him proved to be a challenge. They distributed his picture, announcing that he is wanted. Over time, Colton's name and appearance became recognizable among the inhabitants, spreading like wildfire. Nonetheless, the island was vast, comprising diverse regions, numerous towns, and expansive territories. While Colton's notoriety grew, he remained focused on accumulating an arsenal of supplies. Utilizing the stolen credit cards, he acquired an array of tools, devices, and survival essentials. Among his purchases were specialized equipment, including bear repellent sprays, empowering him to navigate the challenges of the forest with greater confidence. In the year 2007, at the age of 15, Colton found himself caught in a series of house break-ins. His audacious nature led him to steal packages left at people's doorsteps. However, his spree came to an end when he broke into a house only to find himself surrounded by police. The vigilant neighbors had reported the suspicious activity, prompting a swift response. Colton was apprehended and sent to a juvenile detention center. During his time in prison, Colton displayed a different side of himself. He avoided trouble and focused on self-improvement. He spent his days reading books, honing his drawing skills, and developing a keen interest in aviation. He even sketched aircraft designs. Colton participated actively in discussions and classes, giving the impression that he was determined to turn his life around upon release. Colton was very committed to following instructions in prison, demonstrating a clear desire to improve himself. He would talk to the supervisors and tell them that when he gets out, he plans to return to studying, attend university, and pursue a better life. He achieved his goal after 10 months of good behavior in prison. They transferred him to a detention center, and there he simply started observing the movements of the guards, analyzing and understanding the routine of the security monitoring in the facility. One night, he took his belongings, quietly sneaked out through a window, and escaped from the detention center. The center didn't even have a fence or a mesh on the outside, so it was easy for him to climb out the window and descend. Once again, Colton was a free man. Fast forward to 2008, and Colton, now 17, had no choice but to return to his previous life. He set up a tent deep in the forest and resumed his activities of stealing from homes and occasionally even robbing stores. His physical prowess and strength allowed him to climb, break in, and infiltrate with ease. In one daring heist, he entered a tool store through a second floor window and successfully broke into the safe. Despite the police's relentless pursuit, Colton managed to evade capture. In one daring escape, he even stole a powerful sports car, a luxurious Mercedes, and outran a police chase. Utilizing his knowledge of the area, Colton deftly maneuvered through the roads until he disappeared into the woods. The police arrived to find an abandoned car crashed into a tree, while Colton made his getaway into the dense forest. The police reinforcements began to surround the area and search for him, but to no avail. The thefts continued unabated, with Colton targeting various locations. He even escalated his crimes by stealing an assault rifle from a police car. Although his robberies were typically nonviolent, the theft of a police assault rifle raised the stakes significantly. The police forces on the island launched an intense search operation in all areas. Armed officers calmed the surroundings, accompanied by their dogs and helicopters hovering above. However, despite their efforts, the search yielded no results. Even the FBI joined the investigation, offering a reward of $10,000 for his capture. Meanwhile, Colton existed in a world of his own, planning something unimaginable to anyone else. We previously mentioned his love for airplanes, which grew during his time in prison. After his escape, he purchased aviation manuals and a laptop to play flight simulation games. 
he became interested in a particularly realistic game by Microsoft called Flight Simulator. He played it extensively, using it as a means to learn about flying. His ultimate goal was to steal an aircraft and fly it solo. After studying aviation manuals and playing flight simulation games for a while, he began discreetly monitoring a small local airport nestled on the island, frequented by owners of private planes. He spent time lurking at the airport, occasionally taking advantage of opportunities to enter some of the aircraft and steal their user manuals. He would then make his escape, eagerly reading these manuals with great enthusiasm. Eventually, he felt he had acquired the necessary knowledge. One night, he decided to infiltrate the airport. He broke the lock of the hangar where the aircraft were stored and carefully examined each one. After selecting the most suitable aircraft, he pulled it out of the hangar onto the runway. With the acquired knowledge from the manuals and games, he managed to operate the aircraft with relative ease. The moment arrived. Colton took flight, flying over the clouds with an exhilaration that transcended the boundaries of his wildest dreams. Maintaining a moderate altitude of no more than 18,000 feet, he skillfully evaded radar detection, camouflaging within the airspace reserved for helicopters and small private planes. His stealthy maneuvers went unnoticed by air traffic controllers. Amidst the euphoria of his airborne adventure, Colton overlooked a critical detail, the dwindling fuel reserves within the stolen aircraft. A realization struck him, the imminent challenge of landing safely. The landing, notorious for its complexity and danger, awaited him. With limited options at his disposal, he resorted to a controlled crash landing, an act of controlled destruction. Selecting an open area, he guided the aircraft towards the ground, its impact reverberating as it plowed into the earth. Astonishingly, Colton emerged from the wreckage relatively unscathed, his body adorned with mere scratches and bruises. Without delay, he emerged from the remnants of his airborne triumph and forged ahead, disappearing into the sheltering embrace of the nearby forest. The authorities, notified of the stolen aircraft, never entertained the notion that Colton could be connected to such audacious acts. Their suspicions instead gravitated towards the involvement of drug traffickers, attributing the bold escapade to their illicit dealings. However, Colton's escape continued as he evaded the authorities on the island. The police were relentless in their search, even discovering his tent and confiscating his belongings, but he always managed to stay one step ahead. Colton observed their movements from a safe distance and remained hidden. The police began suspecting him of being responsible for the airplane thefts, as the aviation manuals found in his tent matched the stolen airplane. They found it hard to believe that this teenager, who had never boarded an airplane before in his life, could steal and fly an aircraft. On the other hand, Colton decided to venture to a neighboring island, which belonged to the state of Washington. He stole another plane and smoothly landed it on the new island. Inside a supermarket there, he noticed an ATM and found a forklift truck used in warehouses. Colton took the forklift, drove it into the ATM, broke it open, and took the money. This was not the only theft he committed on this island. He targeted multiple places, with surveillance cameras capturing his every move and fingerprints everywhere. The police realized he was present on this island. This time, they were certain that Colton, the mad boy, was responsible for the airplane theft. Colton's name and pictures began to spread, and he gained a peculiar following who dubbed him the Barefoot Bandit due to his habit of being barefoot during his heists. His nickname gained popularity, leading to fan pages, YouTube discussions, songs, and graffiti art dedicated to him. Colton seemed to relish the attention and even left his mark by drawing footstep marks on the floor of a supermarket during one of his thefts, acknowledging his fans. Eventually, Colton decided to leave this second island because the police and the FBI were intensifying their pursuit. There was even increased monitoring at local airports. This time, he chose a different mode of transportation, simply stealing a boat by taking its key. He sailed it from the island to Canada, crossing the maritime borders without detection by the Coast Guard. He spent a few weeks there, 
where he met two individuals who became his friends. They were unaware of his identity. After spending a few days together, they separated, and later they saw news reports about an American runaway. They realized that this was the same person they had met. Feeling the heat dying down, Colton stole another boat and returned to the United States. He resumed his car thefts, but implemented a careful strategy. He avoided using the same car for too long and never refueled at gas stations to avoid surveillance cameras. Instead, he switched stolen cars when they ran out of fuel. This pattern continued until he reached a local airport in Idaho, near Washington State. Colton stole another airplane and flew it to Granite Falls, Washington. When Colton arrived in this area, he saw an empty piece of land ahead and decided to land on it. During the landing, he discovered that the land was filled with cut tree stumps, causing a rough landing that damaged the plane. Fortunately, Colton survived without any serious injuries and immediately headed toward the forest. However, this time the area was not deserted, and there were people who witnessed the plane crash, including a man who worked in logging. He approached the plane and immediately informed the authorities. The FBI and specialized helicopter units swiftly arrived, and the police immediately began an extensive aerial search. They sealed off the area and established wide-ranging checkpoints. Meanwhile, a local family reported seeing a suspicious individual amidst the trees near their home. Acting promptly, the police rushed to the scene and commenced a thorough search. Unbeknownst to them, Colton was hiding there and managed to evade capture, abandoning his belongings in the process. The authorities confiscated all his possessions, including a bag containing around $20,000 in cash, as well as a camera with selfies of Colton in it. Despite the extensive search efforts by the police, FBI, and special forces, they were unable to capture him again. On the other hand, Colton successfully stole another plane for the fifth time, and this time, his destination was another island also located in Washington state. Fortunately, the landing went smoothly, and the plane remained intact. After a few thefts in the area, Colton decided to lay low for several months, sensing the increasing intensity of the pursuit. Some of his fans even started to speculate that he had died or drowned at sea, as it was unusual for him to remain quiet for an extended period. However, Colton surprised everyone by leaving a large footprint drawing at the harbor, and with this footprint, one of the boats was missing, indicating his return. After stealing the boat from this harbor, Colton went to another island called Lopez Island. There, he stole another boat once again and then returned to his original island, Caminos Island. The problem was that the island residents hated him. They convened meetings to devise strategies on how to apprehend him. Nightly patrols and search groups were organized, armed to the teeth. Even airplane owners spent their nights stationed beside their aircraft. On the other hand, Colton had no intention of staying on the island. As soon as he arrived, he stole a car and left the island for another city. One time he was driving by an animal shelter, he left an envelope with a message and $100 in front of the sanctuary's door. The message read, I passed by your place, and I had some extra money. Please use it for animal care. The message was signed by Colton, the barefoot bandit. Colton didn't even attempt to hide his location or whereabouts. This time, Colton decided to expand his exploration beyond Washington. He kept moving from one state to another, stealing cars each time and using them until they ran out of gas. During his journey, he even broke into several airports in different states. He was searching for the right airplane, and the authorities had no idea about his whereabouts. Across thousands of kilometers throughout America, no one knew exactly where he was. Finally, after crossing nine states and covering a distance of 3,200 kilometers, stealing 11 cars, he arrived at the airport in the city of Bloomington, Indiana, where the desired plane was located. He camped among the trees near the airport, observing from a distance and waiting for the opportune moment. When the moment came, he emerged, boarded the plane, and started it up. Once the plane was ready for takeoff, he took to the runway and flew away. This would be Colton's final flight, taking him to the south, 
specifically to the Bahamas, an independent country. When Colton reached the Bahamas, some people noticed a plane circling the same area four or five times before landing, despite the absence of an airport. Colton executed the same landing technique as before, but this time the ground was flat and muddy, resulting in a successful landing. Colton immediately headed for the forests as soon as he disembarked from the plane. Shortly after, the police arrived and inspected the aircraft, discovering its American origin. They notified the American authorities, initiating communication between them. The American authorities shared the information they had about Colton with the Bahamas authorities. It was now confirmed that Colton had reached the Bahamas, and the news spread through television and other media outlets. Without wasting any time, Colton embarked on his familiar routine of theft. He brazenly burglarized a store and a restaurant, making off with some cash, food, and necessary supplies. He retreated into the depths of the forest, relishing his freedom. He spent his time swimming on the beach and discovering idyllic spots as if he were indulging in a carefree vacation. Afterward, he stole a car and headed to one of the major cities on the island. Upon arrival, he began to explore the area, keeping a watchful eye on the harbor. He noticed one of the boat owners disembarking and leaving his boat unattended. Colton stealthily followed the individual until he reached his car. The boat owner entered a nearby restaurant, apparently leaving the boat key inside the car. Seizing the opportunity, Colton swiftly broke into the vehicle, snatched the boat key, and made a beeline for the harbor. He quickly boarded the boat, started the engine, and sailed away from the scene. With this boat, he journeyed to another island within the Bahamas called Oliveira. In a serene haven among the trees, Colton found solace as usual, concealing himself on the island for about a week. He avoided being seen because his image and name were widely circulated in the news. Sometimes, he would pass by restaurant and catch glimpses of his own face on television screens, or even encounter wanted posters featuring his image and name. To evade recognition, he would disguise himself and alter his appearance. However, feeling exhausted by this situation, he decided to steal a boat once again. Setting sail from the harbor, he roamed the sea for a while before engaging in something peculiar and foolish simultaneously. Approaching the harbor with his boat, there were two young men standing on the pier. Colton began maneuvering the boat swiftly as if putting on a show for them. The two men were bewildered, wondering what this audacious white boy was attempting by displaying his skills before them. Eventually, Colton brought the boat closer to the pier and started talking to them, saying, you guys don't know me. I'm Colton, the barefoot bandit. One of the men immediately recognized him and knew that there was a reward of $10,000 for capturing him. However, he pretended not to know Colton with the intention of luring him closer for apprehension. Colton approached him and said, I know you recognize me. Don't play dumb. Call the police and let them come for me. I want to have some fun with them. The audacity and fearlessness with which he spoke left a lasting impression. Meanwhile, the second man discreetly contacted their friend, who has a boat, in hopes of intercepting Colton. Colton noticed the man talking on his phone and swiftly maneuvered his boat away. The two men stood on the pier, watching Colton recede into the distance, his unwavering gaze and mischievous smile as if he is challenging them. Shortly thereafter, their friend, accompanied by a group of friends arrived. Now they become six, they boarded the boat and commenced the pursuit, witnessing Colton standing on his boat defiantly from afar. When they closed in on him, one of them drew his gun and aimed it at Colton. However, Colton skillfully executed a maneuver with the boat, creating a wave that splashed over them, soaking them all. The boat's driver was momentarily blinded by water in his eyes and lost his bearings, veering off in a different direction. Colton swiftly distanced himself from them. He managed to escape from them and headed towards a nearby harbor. This harbor was situated directly behind a house resembling a palace, guarded by a security guard who observed the unfolding events from a distance. Filled with astonishment, he saw a boat chasing another one, 
one with a lone boy and the other carrying a group of people screaming and pursuing the boy's boat. The security guard contemplated calling the police at that moment, but then noticed Colton's boat swiftly approaching the harbor. He signaled for him to slow down, but Colton crashed the boat into the harbor and immediately jumped off, sprinting until he reached the harbor's dock. The security guard was standing in front of the house and Colton, gasping for breath, told him that they were trying to kill him. After that, he quickly bypassed the officer and disappeared into the bushes and shrubs, running towards the house. The security man chased after him, maintaining a short distance between them. Ultimately, Colton hid among the shrubs surrounding the house. The security officer promptly contacted the local police commander, and he told him that he just saw the boy from the news hiding in the garden of the house that he is guarding among the bushes. The police chief immediately alerted the police forces in the area and the harbor, and they began to surround the place. Colton couldn't escape from the area, as there was no open space for him to make his way out. But nothing is impossible for Colton. He continued to sneak between the bushes and went around the harbor from the other side, quietly descending into the water while they were searching above. Slowly, he swam towards a boat and climbed aboard. At that moment, many people, including the police, boat owners and residents, were standing in the harbor. They saw a boat moving silently and slowly with dim lights. They were puzzled as to why the boat was moving. Suddenly, Colton accelerated to maximum speed and distanced himself from the harbor. At that point, people realized what was happening and quickly notified the police. However, the police boats were not there. Some individuals who were present in the harbor offered their boats to the police for the chase. The police boarded the boats and started pursuing Colton, but he had a significant lead. Throughout this time, Colton kept looking back to gauge their proximity. In a moment of distraction, his boat hit a sandy extension from the island that he hadn't noticed before. The boat got stuck in the sand, and despite his efforts to push and rev the engine, the propellers hit the sand, immobilizing the boat. The police closed in on him. They aimed their guns at him. Then, something strange happened. Colton raised the gun he had in his possession and pointed it at his own head, threatening to shoot himself. The police urged him to put down his weapon, but he kept screaming, it's impossible to go back. It's impossible to go back. However, with his other hand, Colton was trying to free the boat from the sand. In a sudden twist, he rotated his body and forcefully turned the boat's engine to its maximum capacity. Miraculously, he managed to dislodge the boat from the sand. But that very moment, the police opened fire, not aiming at him, but at the boat's engine. Their focus was on disabling the engine. In the end, as soon as the bullets were fired, Colton dropped the gun, placed his hand on his head, surrendered, and repeatedly shouted, I surrender, I surrender. The police, after confirming that the boat couldn't move, instructed Colton to raise his hands. They approached him and finally arrested him completely subdued. After two and a half years since his prison escape, Colton was apprehended. As soon as they arrested him and brought him back to the harbor, a crowd gathered, capturing the moment on camera. Colton even tried to hide his face. He didn't want to be photographed. The police of the Bahamas accomplished what the American police, FBI, and even the special forces could not. Here, we see moments of Colton's transfer by plane for trial in the Bahamas. The strange part is that after the Bahamian authorities held him accountable for all the thefts and crimes he had committed there, they sentenced him to a fine of only $300 for entering the country illegally. However, because they wanted to hand him over to the U.S. authorities as soon as possible, the charges and punishments awaiting him there were much more severe. The second time Colton appeared in custody, they had him wearing white shoes. After Colton was handed over to America, he was tried in 2010, and his trial continued for several months. Of course, at the age of 19, he was no longer a minor and was to be tried like any other adult man. The charges against him were numerous. He faced 67 charges in three different countries, America, Canada, and the Bahamas. 
a potential sentence awaiting him could be as long as 30 years or more. Fortunately for Colton, they appointed one of the best lawyers, John Henry Brown, to defend him. This lawyer was famous for taking on the toughest criminal cases. One of the most controversial cases he handled was that of Ted Bundy, one of the most notorious serial killers in history. The lawyer didn't try to challenge all the charges against Colton. On the contrary, he convinced Colton to confess all of them. However, at the same time, he drew the attention of the judge and the jury to Colton's childhood and the environment in which he grew up. He tried to make them understand the suffering Colton had experienced from a young age and his struggles. The judge indeed sympathized with his situation. In the end, after consulting with the jury, they sentenced Colton to seven years, and even these seven years were not fully completed. He served five years in prison and was released on parole. Colton was released from prison in 2016 at the age of 25. Interestingly, he worked as an assistant at the lawyer's office who defended him. For a person with a criminal record like Colton, it is challenging to find employment, so it was a great gesture from the lawyer to offer him a job. In some interviews afterward, Colton spoke about his intense dislike for the person he used to be in the past and his desire to distance himself from that person as much as possible and leave the past behind. He mentioned that he is currently trying to rebuild his life and explore opportunities, such as giving lectures and sharing his life experience with others. This boy may have lived one of the wildest teenage phases in history. He stole houses, cars, boats, and planes, robbed banks, and escaped from prison. But the bright side is that the court showed sympathy towards him, and the verdict was lenient. And here we have reached the end of our story. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to support us with a like. And if you're not a subscriber yet, subscribe now and hit the bell icon.